folks, it's Steve Runs here once again, the channel created for like-minded people who are looking to become better and fitter and healthier versions of themselves. And if that sounds like you, then please hit the red subscribe button below and let's go on this journey together. Right, the Mafto Method explained to you in 10 minutes. Let's crack straight on. Three, two, one, go. Okay. Mafto method is a brilliant holistic method of getting truly fit and healthy with holistic meaning there's more to it than just running. And if you can nail this whole thing down, then you are going to really reap the benefits of math and it's a real life changing method. Trust me, it is worth a look. So MAF, math, actually stands for maximum aerobic function. And it's just a coincidence that it was designed by Dr. Phil Maffetone, or it's a very clever marketing idea. Either way, it fits and it works. The method is designed to make your body more efficient at using fat as fuel rather than carbs, and can enable you to run for longer and run way more because of the little amount of injuries that you will get from running at this low intensity. The method creator, Dr. Phil Maffetone, is internationally recognized researcher and clinician in the fields of sports, exercise and general health and fitness and nutrition with over 40 years of research to his Maffeto method so it's fair to say the man knows his stuff. So what exactly does math include? Well it includes the calculation of a new and simple intensity to do all your workouts at. It guides you towards a healthy and natural way of eating, encourages more excellent quality sleep and helps you deal with any unnecessary life stresses. That all sounds good right? So what happens next then you ask? So the first thing we do is we calculate your new and important heart rate in which you will do all of your workouts at. To get this, we use the 180 minus your age method. And it's simple maths, 180 take away your age. So for example, you're a 40 year old person, 180 take away 40 equals 140 beats per minute. You now have your preliminary workout heart rate of 140, but wait, there's a few more rules to follow and it includes adding or taking away beats depending on your situation. If you have or are recovering from a major illness, um, heart disease, any operation or hospital stay, etc. If you're in rehabilitation or have on any regular medication or are chronically overtrained, you must take away additional 10 from your 140. If you're injured, have regressed or not improved in training or competition, get more than two colds or flu or other infections per year have seasonal allergies or asthma or are over fat, which means that the double distance around your stomach is as taller than your height, or you're in early stages of overtraining, or if you've just been inconsistent and just starting or just getting back into training, subtract an additional five from your 140. If you've been training consistently at least four times a week for up to two years without any of the problems mentioned in A or B, uh, no modification is needed. So you keep your original number which is 180 minus your age, and it stays as it is. If you've been training for more than two years without any of the problems listed above and have made progress in all your math tests, improved in all your competitive runs, and are without injury, you can add five to your original 140. So once you've made a completely honest assessment and make sure it's honest to get the best out of it, and you've got yourself a shiny new workout heart rate, then it's time for your first math test. So the math test is the first workout you do with your new heart rate and this test involves finding a nice even surface track or a flattish route and one that always have access to as this test is repeated every month or so. Just a quick note though, a chest strap that links to your watch is essential for this method for definite accuracy. The watch reader just cannot be trusted. In fact I cannot stress enough how important it is that you get yourself a chest strap for this or you'll be risk working out at the wrong intensity, ultimately making the method nowhere near as effective. Right, back to the test. Once you've picked your route, you need to run for five miles if you can, or at least three miles, and at your math heart rate. And try not to go over that heart rate if you can. Jot down your results of the first test for your records. Write down the splits and the average pace at the end, and congratulations, you've just completed your first math test. From then on, you'll be doing all of your training runs at this given math heart rate whilst also working on getting better sleep, cutting out as much life stresses as you possibly can, and of course, fixing your nutrition. Now, I'm not gonna lecture you or go too deep into the nutrition part as it takes a lot of time and it needs its own separate video, to be fair. In a nutshell, the foods you want to be consuming is all natural food. No junk is invited to this math party and if anything that has been tampered with in any way is classed as junk. I know a lot of people who don't follow the math food guide 
and they get results still anyway. If you really want to take runners seriously though, and get truly fit and healthy, then you need to look at your diet because it will hold you back. In truth, I found it hard to stick to the math way of eating as well, but it has changed my eating mentality and I thought that would never happen, but it has. There's a list of foods to eat and foods to avoid on the website, but whether you follow that to a T is down to you, but I would seriously recommend checking it out to see what helps this method be so successful. Another thing to note with nutrition is that math method recommends taking what is called a two week test, which involves eating no carbs for two weeks, funny enough. This is to find out if you have a carbohydrate intolerance. Um, more details of that on the website, so go check it out. Okay, so now you've really got into the swing of math. You're running three, four, or even five times per week. Four weeks later, you're ready for test two. So you hit the same track at roughly the same time, the same gear on, similar weather conditions, you get the gist. And jot down your results like you did before. Any improvements yet? This is important. Do not be concerned if you've not seen or have seen little improvements on the first math test. Do not give up, all right? It can take weeks for your body to adapt, especially if you were a serial fast runner before. It's common to see little progress straight away. But trust me, trust the process, it will start to work and you will start running way faster at exactly the same effort. Now you can keep running all of your training miles like this and just enjoy getting faster and faster over months and build up a really solid aerobic base. But what if you're not progressing? If your times are not improving or you're getting worse, then you need to look at your math and say, did I actually pick an honest heart rate to run at? Am I sleeping enough? And is it good enough quality? Am I letting stress get in the way of my progress or am I simply eating too much crap? Look at all these things and correct them to the best that you can or you get yourself back on track in no time. The math tests are an indication of how well your journey is going, so that's why they are needed every four weeks or so. During math, you will find yourself losing steady weight, depending on your eating habits, obviously, and you will become a truly fitter and healthier person and become a much better runner too. Many PBs are beaten from doing math alone and you'll be really surprised what you can accomplish when you've given math enough time to do its thing. Okay, five quick tips and pointers. If you find yourself struggling to keep to your heart rate, then don't be afraid to walk. This is a sign that your aerobic base needs work and it will improve, so just walk when you need to. There are a few different rules for under 16s and over 65, so please check the Phil Maffetone website for the details and that should be the site you go to anyway to look at all finer details. People think that math is purely slow running only, but later in the math journey, your times will start to get level out or go stale, and this is when it's time to add in speed session work, and your routine will kickstart your math again and you keep the process moving. Also, it doesn't stay slow all the time anyway. My time started at over 10 minute miles, and now I'm pushing eight minute miles at the lower heart rate, so it can be achieved if you give it your all. Your math heart rate pace can fluctuate massively between each run because of weather, humidity, last night's sleep quality, and just feeling a bit overworked. So do not beat yourself up over each run. You will see how it's going in the overall picture when looking at your time. So try to focus more on that. The one final good tip for you to use is to add an alert to your watch to know when you've gone over your math heart rate. This will stop you having to look at your down at your watch every five seconds to make sure that you are in range. And one last point before I go, the Maffetone method is effective for most people, but not everybody. So if you find that your heart rates just don't work, then please check out my other videos on what to do if your max heart rate falls outside of the average of population. I've got plenty of videos dedicated to running and the heart rates to run at. Okay, so that is about it from me. I hope this has been helpful and saved you some time. If so, then please hit subscribe at the bottom, check out my journey. I'm still using math to this day, and my channel shows exactly how the method has got me to this stage where I'm hopefully able to run my first full marathon, which is only two months away, and I'm feeling pretty confident about it. And I never thought I'd ever get to this point. So hit my socials and my Strava. Thank you for joining me once again. Steve O'Runs.